Uh, hi, Joe. Mm. Yeah, can you please send us the link? Because I was trying to find the live stream, which you said you were able to see it, but I wasn't uh -huh. able. So because some okay. of our friends and family are actually eager to watch. Okay. Um, actually, Carissa, can you help uh, post the link? Uh, oh, hi. Hello. So we should start, right? Okay. Um, we are now live, so we will, we will just kick off now. Hello, hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to uh, join this uh, panel, Obra After Work, Migrant Worker Artist in Hong Kong, which is a part of the Global Migrant Festival 2020. Um, I am Ju Chen Chen, and I am an uh, anthropologist studying Filipino migrant domestic workers in Hong Kong focusing on pageants and Sundays and life aspirations. And um, anthropologists like to take time to get to know people and the community we study. And if possible, we would like to become a part of the community. So I really want to uh, thanks Global Migrant Festival uh, organizers for giving me this chance to work with three inspiring Filipino artists who work and live uh, as household service workers in Hong Kong. And uh, so here we have uh, Cecile Kelsas, who is a writer and a poet. Okay, uh, She has been working in Hong Kong for 13 years, but in the meantime, she never stopped writing. Her words were published in a book titled Wishing Well. She's the organizer of a baseball team uh, that earned a championship in Hong Kong. Besides, she's also delivered a TED Talk in Hong Kong in 2018. And then we also have uh, Donna Sabudan. And um, Donna is so young, but she's such a talented artist in many different ways. Um, she has a mural painting of her employer's uh, garden that is featured in various uh, media outlets here. She was known and loved by her friends uh, by designing their canvas shoes. And recently she also found that uh, being a tattoo artist is the calling for her life. And last but not least, we have uh, LP Melissa with us. LP has been working in Hong Kong for 20 years. And I think she always likes to keep herself busy and never stop uh, learning. She seems to be able to do anything with her hands and with any material uh, she has. And um, her uh, design gown, you know, her the gown that she designed with uh, recycled material was so uh, unique that uh, it ended up that let her become the solo feature artist in an exhibition in Hong Kong University and also in the Philippine Consulate General in Hong Kong in uh, 2018. Through my research collaboration with uh, Filipino domestic workers in Hong Kong, I met numerous talented artists of all sorts. I have always wondered how they found time and passion in pushing themselves to become who they are today. Why do they love to see their crafts brought happiness to other people? Why is being inspirational so crucial to, to them? Obra, Obra after work, Obra means master or masterpiece in Tagalog. In today's panel, Cecile, Donna and LP will help us answer this question through their obra. So here I'm going to uh, give the floor to uh, Cecile, Donna and LP. And before I do that, uh, let me share the uh, master PowerPoint that we have that will showcase their work as well. So give me a second to uh, set everything right. All right. Okay, so that's our title, Obra After Work, Migrant Worker Artist in Hong Kong. So here we have Cecile. Slapped and pushed against the wall, scolded for putting the right bowl for the wrong person on the table. Damp eyes closed, thought of her home, a super typhoon blew off the rusty old roof. Walls are tearing apart, her dignity crumbling. Retaliating, silent, lamenting, cursive prayers, closed fists, restrained, heart drowned in tears. A purple spat on her cheek is indelible, a lifetime. She wrote a month notice with surdraps, 
to be later crumpled into the rubbish bin, contemplated of the coming semester, tuition fee, and boarding house rent, an aging mother whose memory is demented. The calendar pages seem going backwards. Legs intricately designed by entwined veins not a famous tattooist could copy or reprint. Between hiccups and sobs, she dream of a good life, diploma, and a beautiful home. Alarm clock wailing at five, she gets up tall after praying and forgiving her to mentor. Dips a slice of cold bread in a cup of pale coffee. She's luckier than the fellow helper next door who's wiping windows before the sun breaks. With thousands summoning Jesus on Sunday, gratitude and complaints fell on deep ears. God must be busier, she feels taken for granted. In an empty cardboard along the highway, she found a piece of solitude and a bit of decency. Phones to deliver the news to a teenage daughter. I've sent the money, buy the nicest dress for the ball. As the sun descends, Maria's face turns dim against the lamp post, a wounded warrior retreating to a metal jungle, equipped with a steadfast faith and packets of biscuits to nourish a revolting stomach at two in the morning. In the darkest of night, she found the strongest ally in a teardrop pillow when nobody can. She flips a leaf of her diary. It says Monday, along with her compatriots, they will fight a silent war. Good day, everyone. Um, my name is Donna Sagudang, and I am privileged to speak in front of you. Um, I started my art journey four years ago doing portraits of celebrities and some of, of my close friends as a form of gift for I believe that the best present come from your effort. In 2016, I got a precious chance to try a mural painting at my employer's garden. The work was well received and was featured by uh, online news Asia Times Hong Kong. As it was shared in the Philippines, it ushered me more opportunities to pursue my passion in painting. The experience gave me a strong motivation to try harder and improve my craft. I tried different forms of art like body painting and joined Guhit Kulai, a group of talented domestic helpers. Uh, with Guhit Kulai, I participated in a few art exhibitions among them are hosted by the Philippine Consulate General here in Hong Kong last uh, December of 2019. It was titled Obra, which means work or masterpiece in Filipino. Being part of the exhibition was one of my best achievements. And I'm very proud to encourage other people, especially um, domestic helpers, to aim high and never give up on their dreams. For me, um, everything is possible as long as you have um, the determination and perseverance, dreams do come true. Later, I started painting on shoes. Uh, a friend first suggested that I do so. So uh, I love that idea that my artwork could become a part of something useful. People can carry them everywhere and my work could be more exposed aside from the social media. The first pair of shoes I designed was a painting of sunflowers. Uh, they were a birthday gift to my friend. She was delighted and it encouraged me to create more art on shoes. Determined to do so, I focus on painting whenever I have time. Um, I have recreated 25 pair of shoes and this is one of them. One of my future goals is to uh, create shoes for dancers. I would love the idea to uh, see them wearing my art as they perform on stage. Artworks connect me with many more friends. One of them offered me to visit their tattoo shop. 
during the first visit, I was offered the chance to uh, tattoo on a practice skin and I immediately got very interested in it that I cannot wait to try again. Um, luckily, a friend volunteered and I would design a tattoo for her. When I finished my first tattoo, I felt that I had never been proud of myself. So I was very determined to become a tattoo artist. I wish one day to live as an artist who make people appreciate their ink bodies. To honor all the mothers who left the country to provide for a family's need, I hope to paint a woman's skin with a portrait of her and her children. Thank you so much. Busy Saturday night is almost gone. She piled the plates back as they are done. The floor is gleaming, iron clothes hang. Facebook status update, tomorrow will be fun. She turned on the tap, then started singing, washing away the six days of pain. Legs are sore, back is aching, nursed under the warm shower rain. She crawled to bed to hug the linen. Teary eyes glowed on a picture frame. Polished nails are glimmering pink, carefully outlining the red pouting lips. Her long black hair cascaded her shoulders, a skimpy tube on top a mini skirt. She grabbed a fancy Gucci bag, pointy stilettos crackled out loud. She sprayed a scent of Victoria's Secret and then sashayed her hips out the metal gate. She breathed the air of one day freedom in the city where flashing lights are nails. She scanned the sea of foreign faces amidst blinding strobe lights and wine glasses. Shoulder pats, kisses on her cheeks while inviting dance floor gladly awaits. She cared less, she ruled the world, loud laughter booms on a party mood and then a pair of strong arms enveloped her waist and into the dim corner they embraced. She fooled the guy like she did a while, told them she's Anna, Diane, Ruth, or Carla, but none of those names she's best known, simply a sweet and loving chick -che back home. The clock is pointing at half past eight. Heart is beating fast, she can't be late. She washed off the paint of a masquerade Sunday happiness is over. To the flat, she left. A pleasant day to everyone. Wait, wala akong camera. A pleasant day to everyone. I am LP Malixi. Household service LP, LP, can you help us by holding your microphone closer to your mouth so we can hear you clearer? Thank you. Pleasant day to everyone. I am LP Maligsi, a household service worker in Hong Kong for 20 years. I made my stay in Hong Kong productive and worthwhile by maximizing my day of and free time. I devoted my time learning and improving different skills and making crafts such as designing, upcycle gum, fruit carving, soap carving, beads making, glass cutting, and many more. Today, I will showcase of my most loved crafts, design gown with discarded material and fruit carving. The first upcycle gown I would like to share is a black gown made of the rubbish bags, straw, and water bottle cups. Hindi nagmumove naman yung ano siya. Wala picture. Okay. Today I will showcase two of my most lovable crafts design gown with discarded material and fruit carving. My first upcycle gown I would like to share is a black gown made of the rubbish bag, straw, water bottle, water bottle cups, dress made by the Sustainable Sunday Couture Project hosted by the both Hong Kong University and Philippine Consulate General in Hong Kong in 2018. I created and finished this gown with an, a 
at one day while sitting with friends in our usual Sunday spot in Central. Constructing this gown is a fulfilling experience. Collecting discarded material from a trust. Collecting site, conceptualizing a design suitable to the participating models who were wear dress and making the gown is totally delightful process. As a gown creator, the heartwarming feedback of the audience and the model was the best reward. Elegance of the black rubbish bag, they said. The second upcycled gown to show is a blue gown made from a recycled plastic soil container and a soda tub. I designed this gown to consume this gown for a costume competition of the recycled material in 2014. It took me a week to finish this one of the design. It is complicated. It was taught to the work of Thursday during all the free time I have still. When I saw the result, I was thrilled. The royal, the royal blue of the truss soil container and the silver soda tubs ended made an elegant match. A friend from the church impeccably carried out the gown and together we won for the competition. The next crops. The next crops I will showcase is a fruit carving. It's a fruit carving in the Philippines. My husband in, is into wood carving. And he he's inspired me to try with fruits, which is always available in my employer place. In my workplace, I usually have some free time in the afternoon before the time for dinner preparation. I always like to be productive. Therefore, one afternoon, I grab my carving knife and start to design two papayas to showcase a bountiful delight, I added apples, blueberries, grapes, and many more. It took me a bit more than hour to this fruit carving. I shared my fruit carving on Facebook, and I got so much encouraging feedback that motivated me to continue. I cherish the sense of accomplishment in fruit carving. Besides keeping myself busy creatively, is also a way for me to ace my homesickness. Another, another fruit carving work is out of a big, big melon. This one is made of the friend's birthday party. He had this brilliant idea to create a unique cut fruit of her. Healthy cake. The idea that may art could, in addition to being pleasing to the eyes, be a healthier treat to a group and a friends. At a happy occasion, made me feel grateful. Many friends who attended the birthday celebration were amazed by the carp, carp fruit, uh, watermelon. This experience paid me the way to share these skills with those interesting in our holiday. It is a fulfilling experience to share these skills. I freely give my time to learning enthusiasts. I would be happy to see them use my skill while working here in Hong Kong or for the further venture in the Philippines. I believe that there is no age limit to learning. We should always be ready to inspire and motivated to learn and practice new skills. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you, LP. Thank you, Donna. Let me interrupt here a little bit. I want to uh, talk to our audience on uh, Facebook. Thank you for joining uh, the live streaming of this uh, panel. And uh, I would like to take this chance to encourage you that if you have any questions for uh, Donna, for LP, and for Cecile, please uh, feel free to post your question on Facebook. And later on, at the end of our uh, sharing, we will have time for Q&A. So we'll be more than happy to answer your question or to talk. Uh, I'm sure the artists will be very happy to talk more about their work, their dream, and how does crafts mean to them in their life, okay? So um, here, um, I um, since I'm talking, so I stop here, you can see 
LP with uh, all the guns that uh, she designed in that um, project, uh, Sunday Couture in 2018. So now I give the floor back to uh, Cecile. Cecilia, the pungent smell of Clorox is hostile and unwelcoming to my sunflower pattern blouse. The floor is swept and sticky with spilled congee and saliva. I pick up the white ceramic spoon that Gong Gong dropped while forcibly taking the bib off his neck. Helpless, he cries out for help. I loosened it. The caregiver gave me a blank look, her white surgical gloves concealing guilt. I can read her mind. She cared less. Popo's wheezing sound gasping for breath jives with a clattering of aluminum tray full of bowls of lukewarm mashed choisome adorned with minced meat and carrot on top. The meal of the day has been served, but no one dared to appeal for a refill. I traversed the hallway of sadness on the third floor of Black Sea, my pace in the rhythm of Chinese opera blaring over public speakers. The smell of medicine and urine backdrop by checker pajamas, adult diapers, wheelchair, and a gurney. Frail bodies behind the beige curtains Sorrow is an understatement. On bed 304 lays a tired, demented soul whose life back then was full of vibrance. My monotonous voice greeting hello is reciprocated with a captivating smile. She asked if I could turn on the light so she could see how I look like. It is not time. That's the first instance I lied Diabetes rubbed the colors and made her blind. I did not let the truth spoil the day. She gently drew me closer, creased hands clasping over mine. Her favorite perfume that I was wearing brought her to reckoning the wonders of lost time. What is your name, beautiful woman? My name is Cecilia. Whenever you forget my name, just remember yours. She giggled and said, what a small world. I wept in silence, heart drowned in tears. Two months later, a white urn sits on my lap, cover engraved with a name that happens to be mine. I am Cecil Kalsas, and I have been working in Hong Kong for 13 years already. And uh, for me, Hong Kong is a land of opportunity for the courageous and the resilient. What could be hidden behind the metal gates and glass windows are pain and agony. But what defines a migrant worker is their perseverance, in finding a way to carry out their harbored talent. Donna, LP, and I defy the stereotype by engaging ourselves in the passion we have temporarily abandoned. It reminds us that we have blueprinted dreams. They may have been put on hold, but we never stop chasing. I thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you so much, Cecile, Donna, and LP for this wonderful, though, show uh, presentation. And um, the audience uh, on Facebook, um, please um, say if you have any question, please uh, post it. And then uh, we will be more than happy to answer them. 
And uh, in the meantime, while you take time, okay, to let the uh, show presentation sink in, I would also like to share a bit of my thought. And I thought that uh, while I'm talking, I can start sharing the PowerPoint so you could see our uh, speaker here. Okay. Um, I am an anthropologist and uh, I have been uh, working with uh, Filipino migrant workers uh, in Hong Kong for, let me see how long, nine years now. Okay. And I think during this time, I, I work with um, um, beauty queens, participated a lot in their beauty pageants on Sunday, their rest of the day uh, in Hong Kong. And uh, the beauty queens, the designers, the makeup artists, uh, um, the uh, stage performers, the singers, the MCs, uh, everyone are uh, domestic workers in Hong Kong. So I always saw that how come they work so hard? They only have one day, not even 24 hours, perhaps 12 hours to work. So uh, how come they don't rest? How come they... Uh, keep on um, striving and doing their best to, to prove themselves. So I have that idea of that they are proving themselves. And um, I kind of feel like this must be a group of um, like uh, people who really want to show that they are more than domestic worker in Hong Kong. But talking to Cecile, Donna and LP um, and working together for this opportunity, I sort of feel like I was wrong. Um, not that they were not, you know, working very hard to prove themselves, but that's not what occupied their mind. Okay, Cecile told me, uh, you heard that very touching poem, um, Cecilia, right? And Cecile told me that um, she, after the purport, the granny passed away, she just had to uh, write to express that sorrow, that strong, intensive feelings. And words is a way to express herself. It has always been the way to express herself. So it's it really doesn't matter whether she is a, what she do for her uh, work, for her life, right, to make a living. That's who uh, Cecilia Kelsas is. And um, Donna and LP as well. The few times I worked with Donna and LP, their hands never stopped working. They are, they, while they are talking to us, while we are planning for this panel, they continue to do their arts so or their crafts um, at the same time. And I realized uh, for Donna and for LP, while throughout these years, they got some opportunities, they got a lot of encouragement from friends, from other people, but it's also that they have been really focusing on, you know, they have to express that. They want to continue to do that. LP would say that uh, I have just a couple hours in the afternoon. I have a few couple, a few uh, hours of free time before preparing for dinner in the afternoon. So I have to do something. It's not a wheel that I have to achieve something, but it's more like that, you know, that, that I just need to do something. So I thought that both of them focus so much on what they like to do. And so their arts, their craft, the painting, the tattoos, the uh, fruit carving, the uh, design of gongs, it's a natural result of that. And um, from Cecile, Donna, and LP's uh, example, you kind of see ladies who are so clear about who they are, clear in the sense that don't even think about that. They just did it. And I thought that that's what I learned from them and how that I feel inspired and would like to share with all of our audience. Yeah, so thank you very much. That's our presentation. And we leave uh, a lot of time for uh, Q&A. So hopefully you will post questions and then we will have uh, more chances to uh, share what you know, Donna, Cecile and LP were thinking. And um, so any question is welcome. And if you would like me to bring back the image of uh, Donna and LP's work or Cecile's words, then please let me know. I can put it on the screen uh, again. All right, so um, I should cut myself short. Again, I'm not the one who um, kind of carried this out only. So uh, here we have um, a few questions comes in. So I will just uh, read them one by one. And uh, Cecile and Donna and LP, when you would like to answer the question, then please unmute yourself. Okay, so we have the first question for, uh, I think, da 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 
Here we have the first question for Donna, right? Oh no, sorry, the first question for Cecile. Uh, Miss Cecile, when did you start writing poems? Uh, thank you for the question. As far as I can remember way back in my secondary years, I have been uh, writing not only poems, but uh, I was the news editor of our uh, school publication. And from there, I think I had already, unnoticingly, I had already made some poems and uh, had it contributed to our uh, school uh, paper. Uh, but during that time, I, I was not really aware that I have a talent. I just posted it, I just wrote it. During those times, there were, there were no uh, social media platforms like Facebook where I could share it publicly. And uh, I think over time, I had developed it. And um, when I went to Hong Kong, it is that we have this period of homesickness that we have to endure. In the first few months of working, uh, I think I was in the stage of being so sad, leaving my small children back in the Philippines. And so I have uh, beautiful thoughts, mostly sad thoughts that I wanted to, to tell these thoughts to my friends or my families, but uh, I wasn't able to do it. And so what I did was I had a notebook on my side and uh, since there was no uh, mobile phones that I could make notes during that time, I just uh, jot down a few keywords. So every time I open that notebook and I put a date, it's like a diary, but not really a detailed form of diary. I can remember during that day what I felt, what I wanted to say were in only pages of notebook was there to, to be able to listen or to be able to absorb what I was really feeling during that time. Thank you, Cecile. Let me see. Oh, okay. I am not, you know, a new, I have already a new myself, right? So um, thanks a lot, Cecile. So the next question from our audience is that, um, how were each of your obra affected during the COVID situation? What message do you want to convey both Hong Kong nurse as well as fellow uh, Kababayans through your obra? Okay, um, so uh, Donna, would you like to take the question first? How were each of your obra affected during the COVID situation? What message do you want to convey both to Hong Kong nurse as well as to uh, fellow Kababayans through your obra? And then LP and then Cecile, how about we take turns to answer? Oh, hello. Um, hi, Mom Ju, uh, can you tell me the question again? Again? Okay, sure. How, how are your obra, how are your work affected during the COVID situation? And what message do you want to convey both to Hong Kongers as well as to fellow Kababayans through your obra? But I guess if I may, if I'm also one of the audience, if I may, I would also like to add, you could certainly say that there's no message I want to deliver too, if that's not really why you are doing your obra, right? Uh, during the pandemic, uh, maybe I can say, um, I have more time to make my work because um, instead of going out, I'll just stay at home and focus on my work because before I have to go out, I have some um, appointment outside, but since um, we have to be more cautious and stay at home, so I have to, I, my focus is on, is on the, making my artwork. And it really helps because I can, I can, I can do more and Sorry, I'm on top block. I can do more, I, I can explore more my artwork and that's it. Mm. 
Is there any message you would like to deliver via your work? Or not really, it's not about delivering messages. Um, my message um, that uh, don't stop uh, doing what you do, uh, whether there's a virus or whatever, uh, we can still have the time for ourselves. That's it. Mm. Thank you very much, Donna. So, uh, LP, would you like to answer the same question too? Oh, during, during the uh, your microphone, please. Hi. LP, your microphone. Mm -hmm. And just put it closer to yeah. your, uh, yes, thank you. Okay, hello. Hi. Yes. Good. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma About the, the pandemic, it is not. Um, for me, it's almost the same for me because, you know, uh, it's uh, during my free time, I just stay in one side like that and just do what I want. And it's a more time for me now for the pandemic because you just stay at home, most especially because uh, we are aware about the people who are um, uh, talking like that so most of the time i just stay at home and then do what i want my about my skills because the skill is just only one uh, we do something different uh, especially for the gown that i made for now i didn't make the gown because you know it um because of the because of the um, passion show is stopped so i just keep my gown and then I didn't make it. I make the different skills that I needed. Uh, and for the fruit carving, uh, most especially for the birthday party, uh, they affected it so much. It's all you because they don't have a birthday party now. Um, they stop with their friend. So I just um, do that at home. I, I, I cannot stop my hand. I cannot stop my imagination to do what I want to do. And then I just want to tell to everyone, if you want to make something, if you want to focus yourself on what you want, you can do this. Uh, pandemic is, cannot stop me. That's all. Yeah. Thank you so much, LP. Thank you. Yeah. So come back to you, Cecile. I'd like to take this question, uh, asking uh, my advice uh, for the new Cecile, graduate. give me a second. Sorry. Uh, LP, can you um, uh, mute yourself? Yeah, you did that. Thank you. All right. Cecile, go ahead. Yeah, yes. LP, you already... No, no. LP, you uh, uh, muted again? All right. Oh, good now. So, Cecile, go ahead. Uh, the question, if what would be my advice to the new graduates in the Philippines? I know the, uh, the, the same question that we are answering. Uh, how is your OBRA affected during the COVID situation? And what message do you want to convey to Hong Kongers or to your fellow Kababayang through your OBRA? Okay. So I guess uh, there's no difference with uh, the passion I am into because writing uh, knows no quarantine. During COVID or the time where there would be no COVID, uh, writing knows no limit and uh, it doesn't really affected me although i limit myself going out seeing my friends and uh, socializing and i even stopped going to the peel street uh, poetry for like five months just to make myself safe and uh, I, although although i have been you know uh into the situation where in I just have to stay in my place, not be able to meet my friends. I think this has actually uh, given me more chance to do writing. And uh, like what I said, like what I told you, Joe, uh, that I am a wee morning writer, wee hours of the morning writer. I am a one o'clock to four o'clock in the morning writer. So I don't think... Uh, even if uh, this COVID situation, why, why, but I hope not. I hope this, end, this will end so soon so that we will, can all go back to our no, normal lives. So I think this will actually uh, usher me to more time of 
writing and developing my craft. Yep. And is there a uh, message you would like to give um, to Hong Kongers or to Kababayans? Yes, yes. Uh, as I'm looking into the question, uh, if what would be my advice to the new graduates in the Philippines uh, to work in Hong Kong or just post their career and pursue their career uh, in the Philippines with a salary that can even pay a boarding house and necessities. Okay. Um, it is a uh, common knowledge that we migrant workers, being Filipinos and being family oriented, uh, our main goal in going abroad is to actually provide for a better future of our family, especially those who are already mothers or parents. And uh, I think going abroad and working as a domestic worker uh, doesn't give us so much pride. But if this would be the means for us to be able to provide a better future for our children and for our family members, then this will be a, a bold step. Bold step in the sense that you have to forget what was hanging on your wall at home, a diploma or a career or a college degree that you have uh, accomplished. This will make just a little sense when you go abroad and work as a domestic worker. And uh, also, this is just an opening or this is just a stepping stone going to other greener pasture. Uh, so please, um, if you have a chance uh, to pursue your career in the Philippines with a meager amount of income that you have, uh, and especially if you are working to cater uh, Filipino people, please uh, continue. But if you have a much bolder uh, dreams to pursue, then I think going abroad and leaving the family behind is a very noble act. Thank you for that question. Thank you, Cecile. And can I, I think this is such a wonderful question and can I pursue it a bit further by making it personal? If it's your kids, who told you that, mom, I want to go to Hong Kong to be a domestic worker. How would you feel and what would you say? Okay, exactly my daughter told me that. Uh, why don't you let me go after you? And she told me, I have a passport. Uh, maybe I could go and help you. I think she has she doesn't have a much clearer understanding of what a domestic, wor domestic worker is. Like uh, we uh, Filipinos know how to conceal what is the real happening in our lives. And so if ever, uh, I think this is one of the reasons why I don't post myself having coffee at Starbucks. Because going abroad is not just having a selfie at Starbucks. This is not the real situation. And so when she told me that she wanted to go here and I, I told her, I don't think that's a good idea. The reason why I am working here, I left my job in the Philippines in a government office is to give you a much better life to make sure that you won't be able to do what I am doing now. And uh, personally, like what I told you, I have suggested her a career path and so I told her, this is the course, or this is the, the, the career that I wanted you to take. Me being a domestic worker or a migrant worker, I wanted to know that someday when you are a professional and you graduated and you were sent by our country to go to other countries to take care of uh, Filipino workers, you will do your work in a great manner. I think, I think this, <laughs> this answer satisfies you. Thank you so much, Cecile, and thank you for not minding me asking you to make it personal. It's okay. And um, that uh, Donna and LP, I think this is such a wonderful question. Do you also have advice if people ask you, should I come to Hong Kong and to be a domestic worker? What would be your answer? Like uh, any one of you? Either of you would like to answer that? LP, you want to go ahead and mute yourself and put your microphone? No, 
Okay. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Is it okay? Donna, it's okay? Okay. Uh, for me, uh, I have just only one daughter. And I think mother is all different. I don't want to sacrifice that my daughter, but I sacrifice it. So I, if my daughter wants to go abroad, like me as a domestic worker, I advise to her not to go. It's better I be the one who suffer for all the things, for all the hard work. But I love my daughter. I told it to her to stay in the Philippines. And I will support her what she want to be, what she want to do, what she her business she want, because I saved the money for her future. Not all mother are the, are, are the same, but for me, I think me is just enough. I want to be my daughter when I go back in the Philippines. Twenty more than twenty eight years, I working. I'm working in abroad. I think. I don't let my daughter to work in abroad as a domestic worker because I prepare myself, I sacrifice myself that I want that she have a good work in the Philippines and I will help her when I go back in the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank Thanks yeah. a lot, LP. Yeah. Um, so now we would like to hear your answer too, but uh, I think we... Now have like a bit more than 10 minutes. So uh, let's uh, answer the rest of the question first. And then we still have time and we come back to you. Is that okay, Donna? All right. So the next question sure, is for, yeah, thank you. It's for LP. So Miss LP, what is your uh, most treasured craft that you won't let go because this is so precious to you. And there's also another question after LP for uh, Cecile. I'd love, Cecile, I'd love to hear more about your writing process. Miss Cecile, do you start small with a specific image or big with a uh, general idea? Okay, so LP, you go first to answer the question. What's your most treasured craft that you won't let go because this is so precious to you? Uh, Amuse yourself first. Yeah, it's kind of complicated, I know. <laughs> and microphone? It's okay. It's okay. Oh, the most gown that I want to keep it for me is the gown that I have a lot of design. Because it's very precious for me. It's a lot of hard work that, that I put on that gown that you get that anyone I don't think so that anyone can copy it because that is all that is just only my design that is the gown which is made for the coffee coffee sachet yeah uh, that one I want to treasure that I want to keep that and then I want to exhibit that in my home in my place uh, for right now uh, all my gown is in the Philippines already so um I want to treasure that because I have a lot of time. I have a lot of friends to save some of the, of the coffee, which is very hard to to collect to like to collect it because not everyone are drinking coffee sachet coffee. So as for some of my friends, uh, I love it. I, I want to say thank you because you know uh, I just use my imagination, uh, especially uh, I don't want to copy to any designer. Uh, most most of, of my gown, but this one, I want to keep it forever. <laughs> I think so, ma'am, this one. Um, yeah. Thank you, LP. And I uh, share the uh, image again, so I, I think you could see, I guess I am right that this is the one, right? LP, this yes, is the one yes, that you would that like to keep. One. Yeah, I want with to the keep coffee the sachet yeah, and because so every is, single piece of that is a the bag of the coffee right yes, and it's also a design right that can be be transformed into transformed uh, to the eight, seven design seven seven different design transformed to seven different design that one yeah thank you lp okay yeah, so i uh, call that um, i call that the peacock design 
the Pika design. Yes, yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you, LP. So, uh, Cecile? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. So about that question, uh, I'd like to hear more about your writing process. Do you start small with a specific image or big with a general idea? I think sometimes with a specific emotion paired with a small image. I mean, for me, it takes so much emotions to write. Whenever I'm blue, whenever I'm down, it only takes me two to five minutes to write a sensible poem. And so uh, I think I, I take uh, inspiration and I take advantage of that emotion uh, to write a beautiful piece, a prose or a poem. And uh, you should also pay attention to the details. Like I am a person who would enjoy sitting in one area and observe people as they you know pass by each time so it's like all the views will be covered by my imagination and from there i am able to start like for example the best example is i wanted to share to you uh teterella how it was conceived so one afternoon i was seated uh, it was drizzling and i was seated at southern stadium in one chai and i saw beautiful young women who were in a hurry to go into a changing room under the bleachers of Southhorn Stadium. And I was sitting there since I am not really on that place most of the time. I was wondering, what are they doing? So they went inside the changing room, very simple. And like 10, 15 minutes later, they came out beautiful. Like they were totally transformed from like simple clothes into mini skirts and uh, you know, makeup and ponytails and dangling earrings. And so I was thinking, how did this happen? And what drove them to like change their looks over that period? And so I was able to like sit there for a few more hours and wait for the rain to stop. And from there, I was able to conceive Teterella. And so if you don't have idea what Tete means, it means a big sister or uh, a nanny to a little girl or a little boy. And so I know commonly in Hong Kong that there is a um, curfew of nine o'clock for domestic helpers set by their employers when actually there should be none. Um, day off should be enjoyed 24 hours long. And uh, while I was sitting there, it's like, they look so happy. They look so joyful going to a place at the back of Southhorn Stadium. And from there, I realized that they were actually going to have a good time. And good time means dancing, drinking, making themselves feel important. That's why I was able to conceive that poem. And so I think my poem will, are based on what's happening in a day-to-day -day life. Thank you, Cecile. We only have um, a couple more minutes left. Um, and there is a specific question for Donna and also a general question for everyone. How about Donna, you take the question, answer both the specific and the general one, and we will see how we do with time. So Donna, have you had ex exhibits before in Hong Kong? Can you tell us about that it about the experience and the general question is what is your advice to fellow migrant workers who have a passion to also pursue the arts so Dona, can you kind of answer both questions thank you uh yes i had exp um, i had exhibition uh, about three in a year last 2019 uh, the first one, my first one is a friend organized this uh, called Cultura. Uh, second one is a, it's a for a cause exhibition. We showcase our artworks and invite people to buy our artworks and then the proceeds will be donated for, to a certain charity. And the last one was the Obra, which I talk about in my speech. Uh, which was uh, displayed in the Consulate General. And 
the question uh, my advice to the yeah to the, the people, people who also want to pursue also love arts yeah uh, the, to the people who wants uh, to pursue uh, uh, um, lack of time is not the reason because there will always be a a vacant time for you uh, you just have to organize because uh, that's why it's called after work after your real work the real work uh, you have to uh, you have this time for yourself and you can just spend it wisely and do something that you love uh, rather than uh, um, uh, uh, most of us spend our time in social media and then maybe um, we have to spend more on ourselves like if you like something uh, about me uh, I love art and then um as well as social media, I connect them, like doing it and posting it on social media, like uh, using uh, social media together with uh, the things that I love to do. Okay. Thank you very much, Donna. And um, I guess we could uh, each speak um, a couple sentences to uh, round up. Okay, so LP, would you like to go first? It's, uh, you could also answer the question, any advice you have for migrant workers who also would like to pursue arts? Or you could just say a uh, concluding um, um, sentence for the, for the audience online. Okay. Yeah, uh, you want to unmute yourself and microphone? Uh, to those who love arts, you just follow your heart. You just do it if you have time. Um, even anywhere, everywhere, you can do that. And if you want to practice, you have a lot of time during our day off, like me. I do my arts if I have a free time during my day off. And I just advise it to them that if they want to pursue their dream, just do it. Life is too short. You don't know what happened after a few minutes, a few hours, a few days. As long as you do what you want, I think that is your best for yourself. For me, as I am, I'm a senior citizen. Right now, I cannot stop to do what I want, especially about the art. People who want to learn my skills. I'm just here in Hong Kong, and you just stay with me, beside me. I can teach you. I can help you what you want to do. That's all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Thank ma you, LP. So, Cecil, I will challenge you with like one minute concluding note. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, like what I said during our first meetup to, in preparation of uh, our presentation, it's like I feel like I'm the laziest among the group. <laughs> in the sense that they have the materials and I don't have. They have the gowns, they have the tattoo, they have the ink, they have the shoes, they have the paintings, but I don't have. I think it depends on how one focuses onto something. I think this is my passion. I think uh, I have the talent to play with words. I have the talent to convey a message through a poem, through a prose. And uh, writing a poem doesn't really uh, require so much money so much education, a small child can make a poem, an old dying person can make a poem, everybody can. It's just a matter of time on how they are going to discover it. So please, it doesn't take a year to compose one or so. And uh, uh, I'd be happy to share what I knew, I'd be happy to, to teach some people on how to start writing a poem. Uh, and uh, if uh, somebody approaches me to, to help them, I would, I would be very happy to do so. And uh, for now that it's pandemic, uh, sometimes there are people who will send me questions on Messenger on how to answer the modules. <laughs> <laughs> on how to construct a poem, on how to make like a force 
sentence uh, uh, poem. And uh, I am very much happy and obliged to help those people, especially students. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Cecile, Donna, and uh, LP. I got the message. Just do it if you want to do it. You always yes. have time for that. Okay. So this is the end of our panel, Obra. Um, after work, and um, this is a part of the Global Migrant Festival 2020, and there are a lot more interesting programs going on this afternoon and also in the following weeks. So please stay tuned and uh, hope to meet you again in another panel. Okay, thank you, everyone. So thank see you. you. Bye. Thank you, GMF. Bye.